Welcome back to Maggie's World. Today we have a very, very special show where we're going to be talking about love. Yes, you heard me, love. And I want you to go and get a piece of paper because it's going to be a great show. Now, what kind of love are we talking about here? Not just romantic love. We're talking about languages of love. And I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Lorna Simba. And she is a life coach. She's a leadership and communications consultant as well as a trainer. Welcome back here to the show, Lorna. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Maggie. I want to have you talk about yourself, talk about um, how you came across this book. It's a book that's called The Five Languages of Love. So I want her to tell us a little bit about this book, how she came across it, and how have you grown from it? Okay. Well, thank you again so much for having me. Well, the first person I heard from this book is my sister. And it's, this is something that has helped her tremendously in her marriage. It's called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And when she started telling me about it and relating it to our parents and how we grew up, it, like, the concept really fascinated me because by training, before starting to go into the uh, life coach and uh, leadership trainer route, I am a Spanish translator and interpreter. So I'm always fascinated by languages and how people communicate and how the language that you grow up in shapes who you are and how you see the world. Yeah. So when she talked about the concept of love languages, it's like, really? Never heard of it. And then across the book, and this is the Spanish edition, so beautiful that he's translated into very many languages. Yeah. And what the author proposes is that we all experience and communicate love very differently. And what causes a lot of disagreements in relationship is that how we express love, and he describes it as language, is very different. So I'm not expressing love to you in the way that you experience and you live love in yourself. So when I think I'm giving you love, you're not getting it because it's like, you know, <laughs> it's not you, coming through. It's not coming through. It's like, you know, you speak Spanish and I start talking to you in French. Right. And it's like, okay, she's nice, but what is she what saying? What did she just say? <laughs> what did she just say? So, um, would you like me to start going over yes, this language? Well, I, I didn't know that part of mm -hmm. how you came across this book and the importance of it. Like you said, your sister, um, it was through your sister that this book came across because it supported her in understanding the way that you know your upbringing and your parents communicated their love. Yes. And um, I think that's wonderful because it's very important for us to remember that we all speak in a different love language and we will be going over the five different languages within just a few minutes but it's important for us to also understand that once you understand the language that you speak you can also begin to understand everyone as they speak to you in their own language how they are showing you the love that they have for you through their language, not through your language. And the more that we're able to speak different languages, the more that we're able to communicate and also understand and have, and stop having a certain expectation. Because when we have an expectation of someone having to express their love the way you want them to express their love, then you're not able to be open you're not an open space in receiving that love that they are giving you because you're expecting it to show up a certain way. And when you open yourself up to their language, then the cycle and the energy just flows in a different way. So now I would love for you to go into the first, the first language of love that, that Gary speaks about in this book. The first love language is words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. And that is you know, actually hearing the words, I love you. And hearing acknowledgement on a regular basis, you know, it's like, I love you, you matter to me, you're beautiful, you look beautiful. And that's why, you know, you see it, when you see it in relationships, it's like, you know, the girl is like, you don't love me, you don't tell you me don't that you love me. me. No. <laughs> but, you know, for some people, it's really important yeah. to hear the words, I love you, what I appreciate about you. What I, so the words of affirmation are, key but the in 
you know, sometimes it tends to be associated with women, but men also can experience words of affirmation where they need to hear it. And also one of the things to be mindful that sometimes the words of aff affirmation is also encouragement. Let's say to a man or you're going to something like, I believe in you. Giving that message, I believe in you. You are great. It's like, that's a word of affirmation that can have a very deep impact. Right. Yeah, so that is the very first, the very first language. It's the, it's the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, words. Words yes. of affirmation. And for your children. Yes. I, I can see how that, you know, if, a, if your child is going to go have his first game, you know, yes. softball game or soccer, um, how powerful it is if you take your child aside and you know that these words of affirmation will impact so much in this child's life mm -hmm. to say, honey, I believe in you. You're going to do great. Just do the best that you can. And that's all that matters. But you're the best these words are so powerful so that's the first one that's the yeah. first language the the hearing the words yes it's the it's like and you said a keyword that hearing when when that's your love language it's not just that you say it but hearing and making sure that the other party hears that you said it because it's it matters to you so it's in the hearing it's in the listening listening of those of those words okay yeah. so the first language listening are you taking your notes make sure you take your notes it's important to take these yes. notes I when um, I had Lorna at the Peace Center at the own Peace Center and she did a mini workshop about these five uh, languages of love and I you know I got my little notebook and I was taking these notes down and I thought these this is just amazing I must have her on Maggie's world because everyone gets to hear this information and take notes just like I did and once you do that, you begin to see, you register in your head, the, the individuals in your life, the people in your life that matter. And you also begin to see the languages that each and every one speak. Um, also, there's, there's uh, that, we'll speak about that in a little bit as well once we go over the five mm -hmm. languages. But the importance of also understanding that you don't only speak one language. Yes. Right? Right. Right, so important. So make sure you, we, we go over that yeah, before the end of the yes. show. <laughs> but let's go into the language number two. Language number two is quality time. Quality time. And notice it's spending time together. Yeah. But it's notice the key here is quality time. So it's this can look in very different ways. This can be uh, doing an activity that you enjoy together. It can be quality conversation, which is not quite the same as words of affirmation because quality conversation is not me telling you, oh, I love you, you're great, but it's deep sharing of what's going on in your life, what matters to you, what is going on. So mm. sometimes, you know, think of it in relationship. It's like the husband, you know, might be thinking, but I tell her all the time that I love her, but yeah, she feels like, you don't love me, you don't spend time with me. Ah. So, and... It is all in the communication and you know in all of the love languages it's all in the listening so it's finding that activity that common time you know that common ground that it's like oh if i spend time with you you know a That's certain amount it's quality it's the quality of time that you spend with them because not quantity not quantity because it can be like, you know, you're sitting at home for two hours and if all you're doing is watching TV, that's not necessarily quality time. But if it's a half hour where, where it's deep sharing or going yeah. and doing an activity you enjoy, that makes all the difference in yeah. the world. Yeah, uh, very different between quality and quantity. Make sure you, you also are clear with that because you can say, well, I, was, I spent all day with you, but you really didn't. You really didn't share. You And... If you believe, well, my wife or my son, they want their language is quality time, and you're with them all day, just because you're with them all day, if you're not sharing, if you're not bonding in their language for what is important to them, then you had no quality time together. You were together, but you didn't have any quality time. So just make sure that you understand the difference between quantity, quality, so that when you're with that individual that has that that speaks in that language well you get to actually speak the language that they're speaking and not confuse or or 
begin to speak a different language. So that's language number two. Yes, language Great. number two. And there's something I wanted to mention before we go into the third one. Is the author started this, his work, as he's a marriage consultant. And he started working with marriages, but people kept talking to him about, you know, what about my children? And this absolutely applies to children. And just like Maggie was saying, if you don't spend your time, you know, discovering and learning your child's primary love language, yeah. when they get to be teenagers and quality time is their love language, you're going to have to work very hard to get there with them. So quality mm -hmm. and the beauty is quality time applies to everybody. But just being present, being mindful, like, oh, if that's the love language of that person, I better give it a little because it's going to give so much. Yeah, it means so much to that it person. It means so much. It means so much. That little bit, that was quality. That was great. So let's go into language number three. three. Yes. Language number three is gift. So in... For so, and if you notice, you know, think in your life that there are people that just they completely melt when you give them something. This you can see their face lights up. That it's like it means the world to them, and it's not about being something expensive or pricey or big, but it will just melt when you give them gifts. So, gift it is a love language, and it has nothing to do with being materialistic or being superficial. Mm -hmm. Because what that what that tells to that person, it's the thought behind the gift. Yeah. That it's like, oh my God, she was thinking of me. She thought of me. She cared enough about me that she bought this for me. Or especially when you remember little things like it's that you mentioned something a long time ago. Like, oh, oh, rose is your favorite flower, and they bring you your favorite flower. So it's that thought that is so meaningful to that person and if you see and you'll notice and you, that there are people that, that they melt that they hold their gifts in a special place or that you see that when you receive their gift and you have the gift displayed or you have that gift in you that that makes them so happy yeah yeah the language of gifts yes right? gift. gifts how beautiful is that remember one of the things that she mentioned was that it's not about the, the value, the amount, the monetary value of a gift. There's individuals that just by writing them a thank you letter. And you also find them when individuals, they might not speak their love to you, but they're always giving you gifts. They're always giving you something. It's because that's their love their love language. They might not be able to say it in a word, but they always buy you or, or think of you and bring you some coffee or whatnot. You get to also recognize that an individual, like, wow, that's their love language. And you, you begin to speak with them in that language where you begin to give them these notes, these thank you notes, and um, little things. And sometimes it can be big things, and that's great too, but understanding that the importance of all of that is that it's a gift and that that's the, the way that the person communicates their love through gift giving. And it's not necessarily monetary value. You can go and cut a flower from a garden and that means the world to someone. So just remember that. Put that as number three. Yeah, that's number three. And you know, one thing to remember with gifts, sometimes it's cultural that, you know, especially Latinos, like, we're always, you know, gift giving and, you know, the little favors, you know, for quinceañeras and weddings. So sometimes we forget, oh, it's the cultural aspect. Be be besides the cultural aspect, it also speaks, and it's like a whole culture that has taken this as a love language. So that's something wow. to keep in mind. And like I said, it's be very mindful and notice your kids. It's like a good friend of mine, his daughter gave him a little keychain, and he always carried that keychain with him that girl is so happy she's thrilled he's like daddy thinks of me daddy loves me i got him that oh that's so yeah. cute oh <laughs> uh, little things that can make a big difference in the person's life just remember that yes now we're going to go into love language number four four okay so and that would be acts of service acts of service acts of service and that's all you know the people who love to do things for you mm. that there are people who are actually doing something of value to you whether it's a you know cleaning your car cleaning your house and it's like and i think the quintessential you know acts of service 
givers are moms usually mm. it's like yes. where it's the people who do anything for you and that's where you know in some of those cases like i don't care what you say you know you keep telling me that you love me but you don't do anything mm. so it's all because for them it's like doing something that will make your life easier that will make your life joyful nothing makes them happier and for them to receive it the same way to know it that it's like oh wow you care about me you you help me out with this is like thank you mm -hmm. yes so um that's beautiful that's really beautiful it's just it makes me think you know of how many people in my life you know the being of service and when you reciprocate that to someone that speaks in that language what that really means and sometimes to us it's like oh I just did that but in their life and in their world it means so much for like you said mothers you know your mom for the most part or for the most individuals your mom did so much and and for for them to just you know wash your clothes and do your bed and cook for you and do these things for you that was the way that they showed how much they loved their children and or their husband of course because that's what many women have done especially when you go back a few generations and being able to recognize that wow my mom loved me so much and I can say that I, as you know for me personally my mom is just like this angel and she's she's always in that space of, of giving and being of service so that's one of her languages for sure oh yes definitely yes. yeah it's it is, it is amazing and it, sometimes it tends to be the silent types you know that that don't say much that are not you know let's say flamboyant or but it's like it's the silent types that they just come and get the work done yes and leave yes yeah. that's how they're showing love yeah. say without saying a word and that's something really beautiful and to be very present to mm. Mm. are you writing it down make sure you write it down it's very important um, when we're able to make that list of our, our of our loved ones and see wow where they fit and some you know you, you'll have a few like I said we'll go into that when they, they fit into different languages but you really know there's certain ones you're like wow they so much fit here and I didn't even know that and I wasn't speaking their language I was speaking my language so how how many years have passed and the person that you think you've let them know how much you love them hasn't hurt you it's important it's important to, to recognize that now and begin to speak in their language so that they know what they mean to you it's very important and now we're gonna go into language number five language number five is physical touch physical touch physical touch it's you know the touchy-feely people who love to give hugs who you know always want to be you know in touch you know holding hands physical touch and especially when you're talking about couples it's not necessarily talking about sex but it's about that the comfort the being next to the person not just that the person is there but just like that hand on your shoulder is very reassuring that that person is there for you mm. and that you're there for them too so that physical touch it's I think sometimes a very often misunderstood uh, language because of the sexual element, mm. but there is so much more to it. And especially when you think about children, if physical touch is their love language, and if those kids ever get spanked or get physical punishment, that's devastating for them. That's almost like death because that's how they receive love. That's how they perceive love. And to be hit by the person that they love the most, it's absolutely devastating. So it's some of those little things to keep in mind. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you get to see now why, you know, there's so many individuals that have that trauma, you know, or even the misconception, I would think, the misconception of the feeling that, well, my father loved me and the way that he showed love is by hitting. Mm -hmm. And so it, go, it, it gets passed down from generation yes. to generation, thinking that that is 
how you show love, yes. especially if your language of love is that physical touch. Mm -hmm. And if that's the only way you received it, then that's the only way you know how to give it. Yes. So how can we break that chain that exists? Because we can't be blinded by what is and, and believe that there is that chain that gets to be broken. And if this can support that, if this can support you being in the space of understanding that physical touch, an individual that has that as a love language gets to be nurtured and taken care of and caressed and loved in that way, this world will shift this world will change once we begin to understand the language of everyone in our lives of our nucleus and our circles and how we communicate ourselves as well and also don't you think it would be great just to to share your love language to someone and say this is how i speak my love just in, in case you didn't know yes. <laughs> this is how i am and so then a person also gets and they're like okay so that's how you want me to show, show you love got it why why is there that well first getting to understand that there's diff different love languages mm -hmm. now that we know that there's these love languages being able to be open and saying this is the way i show love so that we can communicate in a way where there is no misunderstandings so what, what what is your love language? Well, my what are one of your love languages? One of my love languages, one of my primary primary ones is uh, words of affirmation. Words of affirmation is extremely important for me. I can definitely can't deny it. Uh, and you know, we always have like one primary love language. It is possible that you could be bilingual. It it, it can happen. Uh, I do believe that physical touch is also very important for me. They're, they were very close. And actually in the book he has a little test that you can do to discover it. But I think it's something that you start learning as you go and as you notice how you experience love and what 